Please give a huge round of applause for Mr. Kevin O'Brien, everybody. Yeah! Yeah! Here we go for David Rodriguez, my lanky bro. <laughs> How are you guys doing? But, uh, round of applause. How many Colorado natives do we have in the house tonight? Put your hands together. All right. Well, I am not one of you like most people in Denver. I grew up in Nebraska, everybody, yes. Very weird response right out the gate. Uh, I grew up in a small town. I grew up in a, a Walmart town. Are you guys familiar with Walmart towns? They're a town that exists around a Walmart, and that's a Walmart town. That's all it takes. And I, I haven't lived in a Walmart town in over 12 years, but I'm still such a kid from a Walmart town that whenever I walk into a Target, I feel fancy. Like, there's a huge difference, but I get intimidated still when I walk into a Target. Like, all right, things are actually put up on shelves around here. This is not what I'm used to. You don't see the word artisan at a Walmart anywhere. If you do, it's on somebody's name tag and it's probably spelled wrong. Artisan, okay, Artisan. It's gonna take a while to check out here, huh, Artisan? <laughs> and I, like, the other thing, like, I walked into a Target the other day over in Glendale. They had sushi at the Target. You will never see sushi at a Walmart. And even if you do, it probably has ground beef in it. <laughs> and bread, it's a burger. Uh, sushi at Walmart is just a burger. At least that's what I learned in my many years living ah. in a Walmart town. Uh, I'd like to get serious for a second, you guys, uh, and talk about something very important, periods. All right, guys? Get over it. And I'm talking to the fellas. Get over it already. What's the big deal? I know elderly men that are grossed out by the most natural thing that's happened to every woman they've known. And these are guys that saw their best friend blow up in a war. And they're still like, oh, gross. It's like, dudes, women aren't being malicious about it either. They're not doing it at you. They're not like, hey, you want to see something messed up? Check this out. Ah! Have a nice afternoon, man. No, it's just... It just happens. It just happens. That's all it is. It's just a natural thing with her body that happens. And women, I've, I guarantee you, every woman in here has been traumatized by their period at one point or another. So we should just lay off a little bit, you guys. When I was in middle school, the first girl I had a crush on, she invited me to her 12th birthday party out at the lake. And I show up, and we're all standing there. As her mom's bringing out the cake, singing happy birthday, she's standing on a dock in her bathing suit. And she became a woman in front of the entire class. Yeah, that's terrible. That is horrifying. And if that would have happened to me, I'd be famous by now. Or I'd at least have a book deal, according to Judy Bloom. You know, like, I... I would have maximized that opportunity. And that's terribly traumatic. There's nothing that happens to a dude in puberty that could even compare to that moment. The closest thing that happens to a guy in puberty is a no reason boner. <laughs> and you still get a boner, dude. How bad can it really be? You guys know about no reason boners? You're just sitting there in history class, learn about Attila the Hun, and then, oh God. Am I into Attila the Hun? I, I didn't want to rape and pillage, but this is what I'm into now. Better get to work. No, that's, it just happens for no reason. It's just a no reason boner. By round of applause, how many men in here have had a no reason boner before? Boner for no reason. Yeah, every single one of us, you get a non-sexual boner. Now by round of applause, how many women knew what a no reason boner was before I described it? <laughs> liars, you're all liars. You're either liars or you have teenage boys. That's the only way you know about a no reason boner. And even if you do get a no reason boner in school or something, you could just hide it. You cover it up with your books or something. Or you see that guy who does that walk, just like, oh, I got rickets in math class. Don't. No, I just got to walk off the cerebral palsy for the next couple blocks. Yeah, it's, it's fine. It's totally fine. Ah. I got, a bo I got a boner when I was a sophomore in high school in gym class, okay? That should have ruined my entire life. Nope, I just flipped it up into the waistband. <laughs> I, and I had a very chafed afternoon. But nobody was none the wiser. Not even the guys I was guarding in basketball. They're like, why is he wearing a belt buckle <laughs> in gym class? 
Not that bad. Not that bad. Not only am I a comedian, I'm also a Lyft driver because of course I am. Look at me. I'm a walking profile picture for a Lyft driver. I look like the guy who walked out of the billboard that lied to you and said you make $40 an hour. That's, that's what I look like. And I've been a Lyft driver for about three years now. I have a 4.9 star rating. Thank you very much. Nobody ever applauds nor tips. Tip your goddamn Lyft drivers already, everyone. But I, uh, this past uh, holiday season, by that I mean St. Patty's Day, that is my people's holiday, I, uh, I was working and I got a call to pick up this girl at 4.30 in the afternoon from everybody's favorite ye old Irish pub, uh, Cowboy Lounge. She was hanging out at Cowboy Lounge. And she was wasted. She was so drunk that I was 10 feet in front of her and she called me three times in one minute. And all she said was, Cowboy Lounge, Cowboy Lounge, Cowboy Lounge. Like, yeah, you just gotta turn to your right. Cowboy Lounge, like, lady, I'm you're fucking right, get in the car, come on. She walks up and she's like, are you my Uber? And I was like, close enough, get in. It is lawless down here, are you kidding me? Downtown on St. Patty's Day. So she gets in, I'm like, how you doing, where are you going? And as I start punching in the address, I get a text message and it's from the number that she was calling me from and it said, my Lyft driver is creepy. <laughs> Yeah. That means within 10 seconds, she deduced that sweet old Kev was a total fucking creeper. Meant to text that to her friend, did not text it to her friend. Instead, texted to the person that she thought was creepy. So I just got real creepy. Like, as creepy as humanly possible. Right away, I was like, oh, would you like me to take the highway or the back roads? Like, highway's fine. I said moist as much as possible the entire ride. I told her about my ventriloquist doll collection. Uh, just the heads, the bodies aren't real enough for me. And she was going to Littleton, this took 30 minutes. So I finally pull up in front of her house and she starts getting out of the car without saying anything. I was like, well, I guess we'll see you later. But not that much later. All right, it's been my time, everybody. I'm Kevin O'Brien. You're amazing. Thank you so much.